Sergio Topi was an Italian illustrator from Milan, born in 1932, who died in 2012. He did a lot of work over his career, and uh, some of the stuff that he's most well known for would maybe be his Arabian Nights comics from 1979, maybe his tarot deck, really nice tarot deck. But one thing is his work never really crossed over into the North American mainstream, as he primarily worked for Italian and French publishers. Now, Topi is known as one of the greatest artists ever in this field. He's kind of got a legendary status, and. I agree. However, I don't think he's necessarily one of the greatest sequential artists to ever live. I mean, he's great. He's a fantastic illustrator. As a raw illustrator, he's brilliant. But the sequential storytelling end is such a big part of the comic artist equation. And his storytelling in itself works. But what one finds themselves doing is getting lost in his drawing, not his ability to line up a series of images and tell a story. It seems like the visual storytelling takes a back seat to his overall page design. He's not so interested in the raw A to B to C storytelling as he is in taking you on a visual trip. And his work does completely feel like a trip. It's borderline surreal and can feel very dreamlike. In Topi's time, surrealism was a huge movement, and he skirts right up to the edge of it, takes what he can use, and then continues on without falling over the edge into anything absurd. So I guess what I'm saying is that his work is so good and so interesting that it's actually distracting from the story. <laughs> I know. But, you know, one has a really hard time wanting to get to those word balloons when you're being engulfed in some of the greatest ink work ever. Truly incredible stuff. Yeah, the book I want to talk about here is The Collector, which is probably what he's most known for, I would say. Uh, this comic almost doubles as a coffee table art book. Back to what I was saying earlier about the story taking a back seat to illustration. That's on full display with this book. Whenever I pick this up, I just want to open it up to a random page and just stare at whatever's there you know as you can see it's in black and white which is good i much prefer his black and white work where you can just see his hand moving and there's just this amazing kinetic energy that he's got however there is of course a story here and like the title suggests it's about a collector a 19th century collector who is hunting down strange hidden artifacts from various places across the world each chapter is a short story of the collector on his journey to track down these objects, and in doing so, he encounters different cultures. And here too is where Topi just excels and, and pushes it to another level. He is a master of conveying ethnicity. It's just amazing how he pulls out the character. I have never seen any artist come close to capturing various races like this, ever. It's, it's a completely different level. Being the 19th century, many of these places are just right on the edge of colonialism, so you have this sense that the collector is not necessarily seizing these artifacts, but rather preserving them as they may not survive the changes taking place in these tribes and cultures. So man, before you think this is some commentary on the evils of colonialism and all that, it's not. It's a stranger in a strange land type story. But interesting enough there's kind of this other side where the locals in this land are also becoming strangers as well as they're encountering these oddities from the outside it's it's very multi-layered and i don't want to spoil anything so i'm not really going to get that deep into it but regardless everyone here in this story is being fractured and it's held together by a thread which the art in itself is really complementary to that overall uh, vibe throughout the book so the collector himself he belongs everywhere and nowhere he's like a spirit moving through these remote far-flung places as i see it it's kind of that's the existential crisis at play here kind of belonging and cultural preservation and how often when two dramatically different cultures come into contact with one another and try to merge they create something new which is alien and fundamentally unsatisfactory to both parties. So, yeah. And Topi is Italian and a child of the 20th century, so he was in a cultural clash himself, one would think. Italian futurism was on its way out, 
in the return of classicism or Novecento Italiano was battling against movements like Dadaism or uh, Arte Povera, which in themselves are sort of anti-art by nature as they're postmodernist, conceptual, and largely against anything actually beautiful. Despite being a swashbuckling, globetrotting adventure, I can't help but be reminded of uh, directors like uh, Sorrentino or Fellini who are, after all, his contemporaries. There's always these sort of larger Italian existential threats going on. Uh, and in reading the story, I, I, I couldn't help it. I was really reminded of this photo that I took one night in Naples. Uh, I'll, I'll just bring it up here. So it's kind of this collision of old and new and a beauty which is now rough and on the verge of being lost. And uh, The collector seeks artifacts from people who will inevitably no longer exist, and you can't help but think of your own mortality and wanting to leave a sacred artifact behind of your own. And this is Sergio Topi's artifact for us. And it's a good one. And I recommend it. Enjoy. <laughs> 